as we come this evening to celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, it is a solemn occasion. Just nine years shy of 500 years to the anniversary of the arrival and the appearance of Mary on the hill of Tepeyac. And just yesterday in Oklahoma City, there was a dedication of a Tepeyac hill for the shrine of Blessed Stanley Rother. Not in Mexico, of course, but here in Oklahoma City. The same size, the same images, very similar. Beautiful. Highly recommend going to that place. One of the sad things in our culture, though, 500 years after this great celebration, after this great apparition of the Virgin Mary at Tepeyac Hill, is that many of our young people don't know the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe. They don't know the significance of Our Lady of Guadalupe. They've heard the name Juan Diego. They've heard the name Nuestra Virgen de Guadalupe. But when you ask, what's the story? No sé. They don't know anymore. And that's one of the responsibilities that we as adults have is sharing that story, passing down the why of our faith. That Mary 500 years ago sought to bring unity to those who were oppressed and sought to bring peace to us in our lives. 500 years later, now in the year 2022, she seeks the same thing. How are we unified in our lives? I think the bigger question is, how are we divided in our families? How are we divided in our culture? How are we divided in our very church? These are questions that should really bring us to prayer when it comes to our relationship with our Heavenly Father through the intercession of the Virgin. How can we be unified? when we struggle to understand each other's languages, English to Spanish. At my last assignment, English to Spanish to Italian to Burmese, (laughs) that though we come from many different places and have many different cultures, we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And we see in our gospel today, during the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth, that just the presence of Christ can bring such joy to our surroundings. That when Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, the infant in her womb, who we know of as John the Baptist, leapt for joy. Do we leap for joy when we come to the presence of Christ? Do we seek to be that same presence of Christ to those that we meet so that they too can leap for joy? In fact, I think it'd be kind of weird if I was walking around and people were like, hey, how's it going? I'd be like, what's going on? (laughs) But how amazing would it be if we loved being around each other more often? It's great that we can come to these great celebrations of the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe and the fiesta later is going to be great. I'm saddened that we don't have the dancers with us last, like we did last year. They came in and told the great story that we all know so many times. Hopefully we'll get them back next year. (laughs) But we have these opportunities to come together as members of the faith, to lift each other up, to unify around Christ and his mother, la Virgen de Guadalupe, la Virgen del Mundo, la Madre de Dios. Pero también la madre de nosotros. That's about as much Spanish as I can get off the cuff. (laughs) But in our lives, God gives us so many opportunities. He gives us so many blessings. But instead of seeing the blessings, many times we look at the small details, the small things that are going wrong, and we choose to pick on those. We choose to point them out whether it be with our children, whether it be with our spouses, whether it be with our own parents. And as Pope Francis would say, I'm not even going to talk about our suegras. (laughs) 
Because many times in life, it's easier to point the finger than it is to see us staring back at ourselves in the mirror. Porque somos pecadores. Todos de nosotros somos pecadores. But God loves you anyways. And God is seeking to change our hearts. God is seeking to change the way that we live our lives. It's interesting, we see in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, early on, that everybody spoke the same language. When everybody spoke the same language, it didn't turn out as you would expect. We all have Google Translate these days, and sometimes it translates decently. It's getting better, praise God. But when we all spoke the same language, we thought we didn't need God anymore. And so they have what's called the Tower of Babel that was built as this great monument to the creation of humanity. They wanted to build it to the sky so that we could walk up this tower and tell God we didn't need him anymore. We don't have to walk up that tower anymore, my brothers and sisters. We live that tower many times by the way that we live our lives. Do we truly, as Christ tells us to, love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our souls, and with all of our strength? And then we love our neighbors as ourselves. It's a rhetorical question. No, (laughs) we don't. Imagine how the world would be if just one person fought every day to make that change in their lives. How different the world would be today. Well, in fact, two people in the history of creation made that journey and did so perfectly. One of them, Jesus. He's God. He gets a pass. (laughs) The other one, his mother who we're here to celebrate tonight. She was perfect. She had temptation. She had the opportunities to sin. She had the opportunities not to try. But she allowed herself to submit to the will of God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit exalts in God my Savior. Those words that we heard from today's gospel, that magnificat. Mi alma glorifica al Señor y mi espíritu se llena de júbilo en Dios, mi Salvador. That is how we are all called to live our lives. With the love and the humility of God. Imagine how much more peaceful our families would be. We'd actually want to be around each other. We wouldn't have to worry about chanclas flying. Because <laughs> you know that that was a fear for many of us as kids. For me, it was the belt coming off. Like, oh. But instead, how amazing would it be if your parents came storming into your room and said, You know what? Te amo. What? I love you. Okay, why did you come at me that way? Because I wanted to get your attention. And for some of us, we've learned the only attention that we get is when we do something wrong, when we're afraid. But the Lord and Pope St. John Paul II continually told us, be not afraid. No Tienes miedo. I think that's the right translation. Más o menos. (laughs) But how much fear do we have in our lives? How much fear do we have in our hearts? That if we truly understood the love of God, nothing could keep us from celebrating every moment of every day. 
Nothing would ever keep us from celebrating the liturgy of the Eucharist. Nothing would ever keep us from sending not only our kids to religious education, but going ourselves to continue to grow in our understanding of the love of God. Being that model that Mary was for us, for our children themselves. Mary was the perfect model, not just for us, but for her her son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine growing up in a family where your mom really was perfect, instead of in a family where your mom just thought she was perfect. Most families. Most moms think they're perfect. Most dads think that they've never done anything wrong, and they're both wrong. (laughs) Because neither of them are perfect, because they're both sinners, but still loved by God. And so as we continue through this celebration of the love of God, may we truly look to our mother Mary to lead us, to guide us. Many of you women in here today at your own quinceanera dedicated your lives and your adolescence to the Virgin. How did that go? And if it wasn't perfect, what's stopping you from turning anew today? From starting anew today and saying, these last one, two, 65 years haven't been perfect. Salud. But there's no better time to change our lives than the present. May we see in the gift of this celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe a new opportunity each and every year, but also each and every day to model our lives after her perfect life. That when things go wrong, as they always will, inevitably, we may look to our Heavenly Father, we may repent, we may turn back, who may have the grace to respond somewhat like Mary did in today's gospel. Where not only our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord and our spirit rejoices in God, our Savior, but our lives reflect our words. How amazing would it be if our actions truly reflected our words, where there would be no more hypocrisy, but just love and faith. May that be our mission today. May that be our mission at the fiesta after Mass. May that be our mission tomorrow when we wake up as well. 